Welcome to another video from the farm. Today we're starting an exciting project. We're putting in our full off-grid power system. If you've watched a couple of my videos before you'll probably know we've already got a few solar panels and I actually have 30 of them in total. I've got them all at the same time. I bought a pallet of them for really really cheap off a of scrap man. And this has enabled us to be basically just saving the money for the inverters and batteries and then we could put the full system in. Now we've always anticipated getting the big system in as we're going to need it for when we're growing our lettuces and our NFT hydroponic systems growing our microgreens and our seedlings all in our little indoor area that we're putting together at the moment. So yeah these solar panels some batteries and some inverters and this bad boy 14 kilowatt generator are going to provide us with very consistent power and to plug these solar panels and the generator all into a system we're going to use a Sunny Boy 7.5 kilowatt inverter which should be able to take two strings of 14 of these on maximum load which should give us pretty decent power all year round apart from obviously cloudy cloudy weather we should still get a trickle feed though but that's what the generator is for on those bad days we're going to be plugging in 10 kilowatt Victron Quattro and 20 kilowatts of BYD lithium batteries right let's just show you where I've begun the shed where we're going to house all these components so because of the Christmas rush I've just been cracking on with this as and when I could some of it in darkness so I haven't really been able to film much of the initial stage of this but what we've got is some concrete fence posts we've got three of them as you can see down the middle there we've got them lengthways along the shed then we've got some six by twos to form the base with three by twos really close together on the top like as you can see here they're about six seven inches apart now we've done that so we've got a really really strong floor to hold the weight of any future batteries we put in here it's going to be about 80 kilos of equipment in here to start with but building this big enough so when we need to we can double it up now as you can see I've also put insulation under the floor so I've got a piece running across a big piece under there and then I've put little pieces in between all of the 3x2s to give pretty good insulation in the floor because you're going to need to keep this room fairly warm and above zero at all times otherwise the batteries aren't going to work so probably going to end up having to put a heater in here but we shall see the equipment itself might keep it warm enough if we insulate it right so yeah built the base I've put some 18 mil boards on top of it once I've insulated it and now I've begun framing the back wall so I'm going for 8 foot high because battery uh, cabinets are fairly tall and then the Victron Quattro is fairly tall as well so I want to be able to fit them all on the same wall and give us plenty of head height for overhead lights and whatnot in here as well but if you're not familiar with how to frame a wall it's pretty easy literally work out what size wall you want build the square for the outside then every two feet it doesn't have to be two feet do whatever you want really but two feet sort of construction standard space pieces going upwards like that and then we've also put these on the inside so when you put another one joining this side on the end here you'll have something on the inside to screw boards to or plasterboard whatever you're using now some people would also be putting cross members connecting all these together at the bottom and uh, top third I would say but because of the nature of this being a small shed and we're gonna have a pretty heavy-duty roof on it too we were, miss we were missing that step out because yeah it's a waste of wood I feel built plenty of these sheds before and they stay ridiculously strong without the, the, the middle connecting pieces especially when you're slapping OSB board on the outside and on the inside you're basically replacing those struts with the strength of the board connecting all these bits together right then first job on the agenda as I said get this shed going let's I'll stand this back wall up now and then begin framing out the rest of the walls So it's a nice calm day, this wall went up fairly painlessly. This is what I was on about before, as you can see, put a 4x2 like that, which represents the thickness of the next wall, 
and you've still got a piece on the inside to mount a board to. So, got these bits ready, just need to cut four six foot lengths for the two ends, top and bottom. So this is one of the sides framed up. So you've got a little mark there to position the internal bits of the wall. So yeah, just got to screw a few more of these in and then make another one exactly the same. The handy thing is, now I've got one side, I can spill the other one right on top of it as a nice little template. Change of plan. I've just put this wall up. It's going to be a bit awkward to uh, lift the one off the other. If I do it this way around this way, I can just yeah, lift this one up, as I've done, lift that one up. And we're in. All the sides done. Just the front to frame with a doorway in it. Let's crack on. Here we go, we've got the front door in. It's just an old door frame we had lying around that we got given a while ago. And yeah, four by two is the same for the framing of the front and for the structure of the roof there. That's pretty much done for the roof. Just need to slap some boards on it and a waterproof membrane. And it's done. Then we can put our uh, wildflower turf that we've got coming in a couple of weeks' time. So the next task then is to get all this boarded up all the way around. So we've got the one bottom side done here and then there'll be another board on top and then yeah, same with the other side. Straight boards on this edge I think. That didn't take us too long. Now we've got a fully resembling shed. All we've got left to do is just cut a couple of strips off the spare boards we've got for these edges and above the door there. And then yeah, a couple of roof boards. We'll get to wrapping this up. I'm gonna be using the same uh, moisture barrier that I always use on the outside. Sort of a wicking membrane. It allows water to evaporate outwards through it, but it doesn't allow water inwards towards the wood. It's great stuff, got it on all the sheds so far, and it's yeah, works brilliant. Stops any moisture getting inside. Right then, let's put these bits of wood on and get to wrapping. Here we go, as you've seen in other videos, this stuff's fairly painless to go on. You literally staple an edge down, walk it round and staple it on as you go. Easy peasy. Gone and left a bit of a loose edge on here though, as we've got to get the reciprocating saw down this edge and trim the door frame up for the bit of overhang we've got on the boards here but yeah other than that next then get the roof on and start insulating all these walls so we're building basically the same roof as on our little toilet we've got there as you can see it's going to be a flat roof we're just going to put a bit of plastic on the top and then we're going to put another layer of plastic and then our little wildflower turf that we've got coming we're putting that on here and on the toilet and on our egg packing shed right just cut the plastic, get that on, and we'll start the insulation. Bosh. And I've managed to get that roll of 200 mil insulation to go a very long way. Because I only needed 100 mil, but at the minute at a place called Wix, there is a deal on, so it's 20 pound for a roll 
of 200 mil. So yeah, I've just split it all in half. And I've got most of it done. I've just got that left to do. And the roof. Happy days. So, we're pretty much there. Just need to get a door on. And then we can look at getting some boards on the inside of here as well. So, inside's all finished, insulated. Got the gaps in the roof done. And then I'm just waiting for Stu to get back to bring the insulation boards to go in the roof, the same as we've put in the floor. And to help me hang this door on the frame because it's very, very heavy. So, yeah, need someone to hold it whilst I do this one. I've also put on the lath all around the outside to put the cladding on. So I think I'm going to start cutting some of that now while I'm waiting for Stu. got it cladded and we've got the door on so we're pretty much ready to go now I've just got a few bits of board to go on on the inside and then power sheds complete so yeah I think I'll leave this video here as a part one of our power system going in so if you're interested in following it and seeing the solar panels go in the generator get installed and all our bits and pieces that we're putting in the shed then please make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and yeah, check out part two. Right then, till next time, bye bye.